are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cod Loop Podcast, episode 181 of the Cod Loop Podcast. And I just forgot to take off the overlay. That's uh, that's on me. Uh, of course, I'm Bill Mark Aibote on Twitter. I'm here joining Mr. Harrison Tar. Tar, how you doing, buddy? Hey, man, I'm great. Happy beginning of March Madness, beginning of what we hope is a long tournament run for Bruce Pearl and the boys, and a long tournament run for Coach Jay and company and women's basketball who have, uh, you know, they they were they received a bid of sorts from a committee of sorts. Um, I actually kind of slided the committee in the description. So if you don't usually read descriptions, make sure you go catch a couple of gags. I got a little goofy today. But happy March Madness officially. We had the, the play-in games, obviously. Uh, but officially March Madness on the men's side. And happy tournament season March Madness for the women as well. So I hope you guys already have all your brackets locked. Because if not, I think you have like two hours after the show comes out uh, to lock your bracket. I'm pretty sure uh, we'll have a game. Lock at noon right they, 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 so maybe you have you have you have, you have a, a noon three Eastern. three and a half yeah two to three three and a half three hours you have only a few hours to make sure you're part of the college loop bracket challenge to win you have, you have some time left a day and a couple to a pass for you and a friend to play rtj with myself truly uh but very very excited to be here talking all auburn athletics and we'll jump right into auburn men's basketball as they take on yale D- dylan i'm gonna go ahead and give a quick little spiel on the Yale Bulldogs, who made the tournament by the grace of God. Not that they're not a good team. 22-9, and nine, second place in the Ivy League. Wound up winning the Ivy League tournament over Brown on a buzzer beater. So talk about cardiac kids. Yale has been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Now, if you look through their 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 schedule, I obviously mentioned the nine, the nine losses. Uh, one coming from one Gonzaga, uh, Weber State. And you look at Vermont, also in the tournament. Um, Rhode Island, uh, uh, and then you look at Kansas, obviously a, a factor in, the, in this NCAA tournament, a team that some people think can go deep. I actually think they'll get bounced a little earlier. Went on a long run before running into Princeton and Cornell Corn, Cornell, Cornell uh, toward the end of their regular season slate, and then wound up winning, once I, as I previously mentioned, the Ivy League tournament. So this team's hot. They're hot at the right time. They played really, really good basketball dating back to really, uh, really back to December. So just looking at them by the numbers, uh, this this group averages just north of 75 points a game, uh, which already, if you're going to play the arrow, uh, which way that points, arrow points in favor of Auburn, uh, they also will put up uh, about, they'll, they'll hit about 47% of their field goals. They're actually averaging 47-0 on the season. 70% from the free throw stripe. That's a big number for me, Dylan. I, I look at the free throw percentage for almost every team when I go through my bracket and fill out my bracket. And then if my free throw percentage tells me I should pick a team that's goes against my vibe, I just ignore it. But very, very important. They don't shoot the three exceptionally well. I mean, uh, I say that I say that very loosely. They shoot at a clip of about 35%, which is you know obviously over one in three, but they're not shooting something absurd, ridiculous, um, like we you could have seen in a Princeton, like you could have seen in some other teams in this tournament. So lots of uh lots of pieces here that from the surface level, looks like Yale is going to be right there with Auburn. And granted, this is March Madness, so all logic goes out the window. But Yale's not as deep as Auburn. I feel like we've said this a lot this year, and that's kind of been the premise on what Bruce Pearl has built this team on. And as we as we have I've seen, it does look like it is poised to be successful with that formula in March. So let's just take a look here at uh, forward Dan- Danny Wolf. He's played in all you know, 30, uh, 30 of their 31 games. Averaging 30, just south of 30, 31 minutes a game and 14 three points. You've got Five Bulldogs in double figures on average, ranging down. That's all through their starting five that will play north of 27 minutes. And then after that, it's a pretty staunch drop-off. Your bench, you're not getting a ton of production off uh, out of outside of Nick Townsend, who averages 18-2 and, uh, excuse me, averaging 18.2 minutes, so right around 18 minutes a game, averaging 6.2. Um, won't get a ton of buckets. Will come in uh, primarily to go grab rebound, rebounds, averaging four uh, off the bench per game. So that's actually solid for a guy. You have a, uh, a your your four coming off the bench. Yale does not feel like to me, Dylan, and as, I'm kind of leaving it generic a little bit here. Does not feel like a team that should, on paper, pose a ton of threats to the Auburn Tigers. All that being said, like I said before, we're going to have some top four, top five seed lo- seeds lose. Uh, tomorrow today is this show's coming out and everybody is in danger from here on out if you're not hot and you're not then you're not dancing it's that simple how do you feel Auburn squares up against Yale I like the whole it's our 10 against your 10 kind of philosophy from Bruce Pearl I think that plays big here 
Yeah, it's definitely a Auburn's ten versus Yale six. Uh, but looking at the at the at the leading scorers for yet y- the Yale Bulldogs, they match up pretty well in terms of size with the Tigers. Because uh, you look at Danny Wolf, he is seven foot tall. You go to John Polakitas, Polakitas, John Smart Kid, uh, six foot six. Um, Matt Nolink, six foot six. Bez and another smart kid named Bez. Uh, he is six foot four <laughs> and August Mahoney, six foot four. So you have the, the smallest like players on the Yale starting five are six foot four. Um, Auburn, a little shorter at the point guard position, but I think Denver Jones is what, six, two, six, three, or is Denver six, four. He might be six, two, six, three range. Yeah. Depends so, on where you look, if he's, li- where he's listed. But I think Auburn has them beat in the physicality range. I mean, Trey Donaldson is going to back anyone down, no matter how tall they are, uh, just because he's that much of a physical specimen as an athlete, uh, especially one that has played the uh, most physical sport in in at least our world of sports in football. Uh, he was an all uh, like all state athlete at football. So Auburn has the physicality. Uh, Auburn has an edge when it comes to uh, the free throw the free throw line. Uh, and I was losing my stats for a second. Yeah, free throw line and the three-point line. And, of course, they're pretty similar from the field. So Auburn has the edge shooting. So that gives me hope that Auburn can get out of this. But, of course, 2019 r- nightmares come up in that New Mexico State game. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, Dylan, to just be just be transparent with you, I actually love this matchup as a first round matchup here. Um, and I don't say that because I think Auburn's got the clear edge. I, I do, and I will be picking Auburn to win this game. I'm going to pick Auburn to win a lot of games in this tournament. But uh, I, I'm not just saying that because I think this is a snooze fest that you can kind of you know skate your way through. Obviously, also New Mexico State's a trigger word around here. Dylan, we try not to use that <laughs> that phrase in any sense of the word. That's sure. Multiple get, sports. Multiple seems sports. to give Auburn some fits, but. I like this matchup and the fact that this is an early lock the hell in matchup. Uh, Yale's not a team to play around with. They will hang around with anybody that they've played with. And you don't have to look that far back. They only lost by five to Kansas. I mean, this is not a bad group. This is not an untalented team. This is a team that if you're not in a, in the Ivy league, you're probably receiving a bid regardless of whether or not you win your conference tournament. That really does not matter. Now, I also like the fact that Auburn's going to have a team that's going to play that has a little more depth than some of these other first round uh, kind of win your conference bid uh, teams, a team that shoots a little bit better. This is going to be one of those. You're going to play a tough matchup every single every single game in the NCAA tournament. That's just the way the world works in, in general. But more moreover, this is a shining example of a team that needs to be paying more attention uh, than, than in, in Auburn than some of these other, you know, 512. You're, we're going to have a 512 upset that that happens literally every single year don't be the 413 that's 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 the problem right and i think auburn's got the golden opportunity to really get some good experience for some of its uh, some of its guys that maybe have not seen the ncaa tournament yet for your aiden holloways for your cheney johnson's to understand the level of physicality the level of intensity and how everybody understands it's win or go home so if you're not locked in you will go home i love this for that reason because it doesn't give you a snoozer uh and then you get the super bowl on on uh, on on saturday and uh, and Auburn UAB should should Auburn be able to advance? And I'm just going to go and pencil the Blazers in because the Blazers are hot, maybe. That's that's just a fact. But a very very good lead, and I I was actually pretty happy with this. Is the only part of the draw I was happy with. Yeah, that that yeah, not a lot of other things about this draw to be happy about because what well, it's the the East. Whoever gets out of the East is definitely going to be the the favorite to win it all, uh, just because they just made. The Auburn, Auburn's bracket just loaded from head to toe. It's like they, they picked that bracket and they're like, all right, we'll just throw it by Elson. But Auburn has an X factor at every single position and their starting lineup. If Aiden Holloway, we talked about this earlier, who who needs to be the the how do, I forgot how we worded it exactly, the the spark plug. Uh Aiden Holloway has that X factor that we haven't seen yet. We've seen glimpses of it, we've seen games of it. But now it's time to lock in. Now it's time you sit down. You're like, this is March. This is the one. This is the month. The that- ball is tipped. <laughs> Not there yet. Not there yet. No, no. This yeah, we're at the the ball is tipped part. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> True. Uh, but 
you look and I, I say this every single time, and it's kind of like my my baseball thing where I'm or a softball thing where I'm like, you gotta score more runs the other team if you want to win. That that Auburn has a main has a big three in, in the backcourt. And it is Johnny Ibroom, Jayla Williams, and Chadwick Mazzara. That front court. Did I get that backwards? I try to No, you got it. Backward is the big all right, sweet. Oh, sorry. Front court. Front court. Front court. Okay. Yeah, for a second, I, I just I honestly zoned for a second. I was thinking about my what I wanted to talk about next, and now I've forgotten about that. So yeah, we're <laughs> we're gonna figure out where this goes. Yeah, uh the court, the court people. Uh the, tall the, people. the tall people uh in the paint. Uh Janai Broom, Jalen Williams, and Chad Beck Mazzara are your X Factor three. Those are, those are the ones you're looking at to take over this game. Auburn is going to win this game, and I'm I'm confident in that. Uh, Auburn has a tough road ahead of them after after this game. Uh, no matter this how game's many no games, exception. This game is this not game a is, this game is no exception, and you can't get caught looking ahead to whoever your next opponent may be. I know UConn is is like two three games ahead, but then you can't forget you also have uh, Florida Atlantic, like or South Dakota State, San Diego State, whichever one is right there. One of the one of the final four Listen, teams from last year. Deal is right with whoever's there. in front of you. Exactly. Deal with whoever's in front of you. And when you have guys like Janai and Jalen Williams, it's very easy to mellow out. Remember where you are. And that brings me to you got we got we gotta calm down CBM and, and Katie Johnson a little bit. Those texts funny in the regular season. Gonna a kill little, you a little a little scary in the tournament. So talk your trash in Spanish, uh, but do it limited version uh you know maybe just a couple of them abbreviated uh, uh, abbreviated you know maybe um, what uh, you know it's like the key and pill skit where it's like the yeah. the hip thrust he does it three times and gets penalized maybe just do two do two of right. those and then don't get penalized so auburn's gonna win this game i'm gonna go ahead and give my prediction i think auburn wins i'm gonna give it 80 to to 77 i like 87 75 I like double digits. Uh, I, I say that because if this team continues to play the way that they're at and they played in the SEC tournament, which obviously uh, I think the competition the SEC tournament at the SEC level period was superior this year. I know there's the Big 12 argument, but, you know, sue me, fight me in the comments. Please, by all means, leave a comment. But um, I, I think Auburn wins this one by double digits, and I say that because not just because the Tigers are hot. I, this team ser- seriously seems to be buying into the whole, like, okay, not only have we, you know, do we should we be – dancing right now but we've got a chip on our shoulder because we think we're a hell of a lot better than everybody else seems to think we are um which by the way guys i don't show this to the team but like most people think that the committee got that wrong and that you were underrated just just like like it's that's just not in the auburn not just in the auburn sphere there's a lot of people that are like how the hell did auburn wind up <laughs> as as kirby smart would say and i'm saying this to the basketball team uh y'all were y'all were overrated everyone thinks y'all suck everyone yeah, right. hates y'all that's right everyone yep. thinks y'all are losing first round Yes. Yes. There you go. There's yeah. your locker board material. And tonight, Please. everyone, uh, everyone in the country actually thinks that you are not uh, an elite big man. Just you know, throw that. Uh, yeah, put that I will on the say, too. ESPN made a made a mock draft for the NBA, for the NBA draft, and Janai Broom was like a mid second round. Yeah. Well, they're just wrong. Uh, they're probably correct. <laughs> Compared him to Markeith Morris. <laughs> yeah. That what a wild comparison there. Um, yeah, I like Auburn by double digits, and and I and I do think that this is. I think you have to win by double digits. I, I say that like. You just need to win. But I think in order to continue building momentum and and you want to peak in six more games, that's when you want to peak. Right? I would say peak after the championship game if you get there. No, I was saying peak. And you can peak in the championship game. That's fine. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. No problem peaking in the championship game. <laughs> you can play as poorly as you want uh, and, and pick up basketball when you come back on the planes. We'll worry about that. We're about how you're playing again when we roll around October, November next year. Um, the next really, Israel game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd like for you to peak at the double zero mark of the second half of the national championship. That's where I would like for you to be. <laughs> so this is how you continue to build momentum. And, and I think you do it by winning in a big way. Another team's got an opportunity in front of them, Dylan, on, on the hardwood. And that is Coach Jay and company in Auburn women's basketball. Now, I'm not even going to go into – we already discussed this about the the nature of, of, of how this wound up even happening. Uh, the first four concept is both just ridiculous to me. And Auburn, also Auburn is better than a handful of teams that were already given automatic bids in the NCAA tournament. I digress. They are taking on a 17-15 and 15 Arizona Wildcats team 
that finished seventh in the Pac-12, which I will give flowers where the flowers are due. The Pac-12 was a hell of a conference for Auburn women's basketball. Excuse me, Auburn women's basketball, but for women's <laughs> basketball this year. I mean, they're just loaded. It, it, it's, it's USC, definitely. Stanford, UCLA, UCLA. Uh, there, there are plenty of squads out there that could really get the job done. Somehow, Stanford not wind, winding up winning that, and USC being better than uh, Stanford this year. I don't know where that came from, um, but they got a hell of a group over there. This is going to be an interesting game uh, for Coach Jay and company. I think it's a winnable game, Dylan, but I'm a little bit uh, a little bit apprehensive about depth for Auburn, and and that that really stems from the fact that almost everybody that sees the floor for for Arizona plays north of 20 minutes a game, and they've got a handful. Uh, excuse me, three six girls will average over nine points a game. Dylan's doing the math real quick, and that is uh, I think. 12 players will play 20 plus. I have nine. You have nine, three, two, three, four, five, six, nine. seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. Five. I was, oh, I was only counting the, I was not counting the girl who only played nine games this year. Okay. Unless, yeah. unless she's not playing or still playing, then I will count her as 10. Okay. Okay. We'll go nine or 10 asterisk. asterisk. Okay. Uh, this group only averages about seven. She has not, that girl's not played since uh, December. She's seven. a long injury. Uh, that, yeah. Sorry. Right. Yep. Yep. December That's 7th, right. she was knocked out. That's right. Maya. Not, not knocked uh, out, but the guy yeah. got hurt. <laughs> it was, was a limit. So, sorry. They'll still rotate out nine. Uh, my apologies. Um, that'll, that'll have um, not, uh, 20 plus, right? That's still nine with 20 plus. And then you've got 10 with 17 plus. Uh, eight with 20 plus. Nine, nine with I can't count 17 plus. I'm just horrid. Don't, don't worry, liberal arts degree. They're, they're That's, not yeah, journalism use. degree. Give me give me a break there. But pretty much everybody that sees the floor is going to play 17 or more. And that means that the legs are fresh the entire game. This group only averages around 70 points a game, but it really doesn't matter because they will kill you on the boards. Uh even, even their guards will kill you on the boards. They facilitate the ball extremely well, force turnovers, and they shoot 44% from the field. I mean, uh, I don't I, 75% from the charity stripe and 31% from three. This they're 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 a good defending team and also very very strong on the offensive end of the floor. Dylan, I'm I'm worried about depth for Auburn. Yeah, I I would be too a little bit. Uh, Auburn only has one player uh, who plays 20 minutes or uh, I was going to say 15 or more. Uh, the average is double digits a game, and that's out of Scott Grayson, of course. Uh, if I gave you three guesses, you would get it in the first try. Uh, you you got to look at Jemai Mingo Young and Taylor Collins in this game. This is going to be our bigs versus your bigs. Can you get the ball to your scores? And you're going to need Sydney Shaw to come off the bench and just light a spark like she did against uh, some of the heavy hitters of the SEC. I believe um, it was the LSU game where she really came out and just took over yep. whenever whenever honesty needed a break or honestly whenever they were both working together. Uh, it, it was pretty lights out. So that's what you're going to be looking for uh, in this game is. Auburn needs to find other shooters besides HSG. You you got to find reliable scorers if you want to move past Arizona and get ready for number six Syracuse. Now I will I will throw this out there. Arizona not that tall, which plays to Auburn's favor because Auburn also not super tall, but taller than Arizona. So you you, you I, I, for me it's, it's a battle of can your guards facilitate better than than Arizona's guards and can your bigs do what they're supposed to do on the boards and, and you kind of touch touch the base there but it's got to be a battle of the glass and taking care of the basketball I, I think that you combine defense excuse me offensive rebounds with turnovers and whoever has the fewest turnovers and most offensive rebounds there's your winner I, I that plain is plain and simple and I think it comes out to who plays the best defense yeah, uh, Arizona averages just a little bit more in steals and block or in less than blocks than that Auburn does, and Auburn one of the best defensive teams in the SEC. Uh, this is going to come down. This game might be just very low scoring, uh, if I were to guess. I, yeah. I just think that both teams are going to make it just a problem for both team for either Rock team fight. to score. Rock fight. Uh, it's going to come down to the wire. If we're looking at Tennessee, Auburn, 2022 in Knoxville, men's basketball yeah. era, like maybe this the, battling to see who hits 40 first kind of game. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, th this is a, this is a game that Auburn's pretty well balanced in. I, I think the edge kind of favors Auburn a tad bit. So I'd give Auburn the win. 
Uh, just very, very close. Uh, when I say battle to 40, I'm going to give Auburn 44. I'm going to give, I'm going to give Arizona 38. That is a crazy low score. I was going to go like 61 58. These are defensive. These are deep. This is a defensive. I, I, no, there's no way it's that low. There's no <laughs> was, way. It, it but, but I do like Auburn. I like Auburn. I think the Tigers have more momentum than they've ever they've had under Coach Jay, just because you, you got to get to the, this point in the rebuild. And if you think, honestly, Scott Grayson doesn't want to dance, you have got her messed up because <laughs> that young lady has earned the right to dance. Um, so she will she will do everything in her power. Don't let her get hot. If if you're Arizona, do not let her get hot because good night. She's going to take over a basketball game and she wants to play uh, for the opportunity to show people what she can do on the on the on the on the national stage. Very very uh, big moment for her. Very excited for her. Something that she's definitely earned and uh, and a whole crop of new faces this year that are going to get ex- their first experience in March Madness. And I don't think there's any signs of slowing down. Um, so very, very excited for them. Wishing them the best of luck. Uh, Dylan and I both picking them to win. Very drastically different scores. Uh, Dylan, and <laughs> Dylan and I are far apart. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a defensive defensive menace. So yeah, Dylan's pushing like Pac-12 football scores over here. It's Virginia um, Virginia basketball scores over here. No. Yeah, I think you, <laughs> I'm so glad you slid that one in there. I feel so bad. I, got, I, I will always – Throw a little, throw a little yeah, dig I, at Virginia. I really, I really feel bad for Virginia basketball fans. I know they're miserable right now, and that really tears me up on the inside. Anyways, if you're hanging out with us here on the YouTube stream, make sure you hit like, subscribe, ring the bell right here on the College Loop YouTube channel. Drop a comment, give us your feedback on Auburn men's basketball and women's basketball, their chances in the NCAA tournament, how far you think they're going to win, how much you're going to win the bracket challenges by. Let us know who you picked as your national champion. Drop that in the comments. We can obviously see it, but for the people who didn't join the bracket and are what we would call lame, show show off what you know. Tell everybody who you have winning the national championship, who's in your final four for the men's and women's side. If you guys are listening on a streaming platform, make sure you give us five stars, thumbs up, whatever the highest rating is on your streaming platform of choice. Share the show with a friend so we can continue to grow the College Loop family. Thank you guys for your continual love and support. You're the best in the world. If you want to help to support the show in ways that go beyond just like, subscribing, commenting, and sharing the show, you can head over to thewarreport.com, pick up your very own College Loop podcast, War Report podcast, network co-branded, Feel and Lippy t-shirt, comes in five different colorways, $25. Dylan might throw the overlay up here in just a second. $25 only available at theworldreport.com. That will be found in the description <laughs> for any one of our shows. Once you pick up your own Feel and Loopy t shirt, make sure you head over to your favorite social media platform and tag us use ha- using hashtag Feeling Loopy. That's Feeling Without the G. Selfie of you and your new Feeling Loopy shirt, a, your Feeling Loopy shirt on your dog. Maybe you're at an Auburn uh, NCAA tournament game and you want to show off, just you know, use it as a rally towel. It's a good rally towel, too. So make sure that you, it can be in place of a shaky if you forget one. Really, really good. So it'll suffice well there. So make sure you use hashtag feel and lippy feeling without the G and we'll throw it up you, in the next three more show. Do you mean a shaker? They're actually the uh, actual brand is shaky. Is it actually? Mm-hmm. Or does it say it on the I don't have one in here with me? I don't know if it's like the only brand, but one of the brands, and I think that was the one that my high school subsidized from. And that's just like we we always called them shakies. <laughs> I've never like I thought you just like said the word wrong. <laughs> no, I, I mean I mean shaker, but yeah, no, the the brand was shaky. So, it's my, I, a, I guess a southern. They also very well could have just folded years ago, and I'm making this up. Um, and this could also be the Mandela effect. I don't know, but I digress. Um, that's a Ryan Metcalfism. So I don't know. Uh, let's move on, and we're going to talk Auburn football before we get into Diamond Sports, which I know are making some people want to bang their heads into the wall. Dylan, you're the football guy. Your tank talks football. The 2025 Auburn football opponents have been revealed. I will let you break them down to us, and let's talk about what's going on here on the Plains and beyond. Yeah, this uh, this schedule looking very similar to this year's outside of, I think, Texas A&M being swapped out. Maybe. Is Texas A&M? No, we played Texas A&M in 2024. Am I yeah. Auburn plays the same teams they do, they do this year, really, outside of the non-cons. Uh, you're looking at, of course, Alabama and Georgia. Uh, you got Kentucky and Missouri. Arkansas. Kentucky's new. No. Do you play Auburn plays Kentucky this year? Yep. So Not that's your home way. games. You'll be hosting Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, and Missouri. So I'm and what looks like Auburn, it might be a two year home and home every year outside of, you know, Alabama being yeah, on sure. the schedule every year. Uh all, SEC is currently looking at potentially going to a nine game conference schedule. So maybe subject subject to change. Uh Auburn will be traveling to 
Fayetteville, Arkansas, to play the Razorbacks. Uh, traveling to Norman, Oklahoma, to take on the Oklahoma Sooners. College Station, to take on Texas and Aggies. And, of course, going to Auburn North Campus to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores for the for the 2025 season. Um, it looks the same as, as this year, really. You don't know who your non-cons are going to be. I'm trying to remember who the 2025 um, – is it a Pac-12 opponent? They're they're Auburn's playing. Is it, or is not, it Miami? Is it my? It's not Baylor. It might be Baylor. Um, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Yeah, but favorable SEC schedule. But my main question to this, and before uh, we figure out which uh, which non-con opponent that is already been Baylor. locked, is in. that Baylor? Baylor. I, I was Baylor. almost positive. So your your complete. Uh, list of opponents will be at Baylor, Ball State at Jordan Hare, South Alabama, Jordan Hare, which is fun. That's cool. I feel like that's gonna be fun. At, at Arkansas versus Alabama versus Georgia versus Kentucky versus Missouri at Oklahoma at A and M and at Vanderbilt. Yep, uh, favorable schedule, I will say. Yeah, uh, South Alabama, uh, a, a team that might have given Auburn fits last year or not last year, but the year prior. Uh, last year, eh. Later on in the season, no. Early on, maybe. And then, of course, Baylor. Um, don't know where they are in terms. You never of, do. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, they're either ten wins or they're four. Yeah. Never know. Uh, but you got Alabama uh, at, at home and Georgia at home as well. Uh, Georgia, of course, the the best team in the SEC. Uh, probably going to be that next year probably as be well. Country. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got Kentucky and Missouri. Missouri, got to got to see if they they can still keep their uh, upward trend that they're on. Uh, I I think they do. I think Drinkwood says that dude. Uh, even though I was probably putting him on the hot seat this time last year, everybody was. Yeah, and Drinkwood says a dog. Uh, Kentucky, interesting thing. Don't know if Stoops will be there in right. 2025, uh, especially because he had a little little breakup scare with, with Kentucky there for yeah. about 24 hours. And, of course, go to Arkansas. They're going to have a new coach by by this time next year. And huh. if they don't, I'll be I, – I will uh, shave my chest. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's <laughs> weird. I, please don't do that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> uh, I will shave my beard if, if Sam Pittman is still there okay. in 2025. Um, that's how confident I am. I love my beard. Uh, Oklahoma, don't know about them either. Uh, Brent Venables yeah. might still be there. He'll be there. He'll be there, but they're, I they're trending upward enough. They'll be fine, and he's going to get a big break going into the SEC. Schedule is going to get more difficult. That, that'll compound. Venables definitely feels like a plateau kind of guy. I can't lie. I don't. I don't know if a I don't know if he's the schedule. Yeah, I don't. It, it's just Oklahoma's defense wasn't all that great last year, but he's a defensive guy. Jackson Arnold didn't look good in the still in the early, game. still, still, still yeah. early in your. Uh, a and M, I think Elko is going to be really good there. Yeah, this will uh, be year two of Elko, and it'll be year three of you Freeze. So, uh, definitely going to be a fun fun season, and especially uh, Vanderbilt to round out the year to round out the the schedule release. Um, is A and M less insufferable without Jimbo? Uh, loads actually, uh, very much so. I still uh, can't stand them. Their fans are still very annoying, but no one liked Jimbo. Yeah. It's kind of like the Brian Kelly effect at Notre Dame. Like no one liked Notre Dame when Brian Kelly was there, but then Brian then you Kelly go get Marcus like, Freeman and he's impossible to not like. Exactly. Yeah. But I, LSU. Speaking of which, where is LSU? I know I said I might have said this before. Where is LSU? Yeah. I I, I like I'm looking at the schedule. The SEC has made it illegal for the Tiger Bowl to happen again. Yeah, and the Tiger Bowl, the, the most chaotic rivalry in the SEC. Yeah, no, there, there's literally understand. been there's literally been fires happen during yeah. this game. Where's LSU? Why can't Auburn play LSU? If we're doing it, if it's a home and home every year, I'm not really for that. The SEC needs to decide on the nine game conference schedule because you can have three permanent rivals, and that's yeah, got to be the, the Iron Bowl, Deep South Old Rivalry, Tiger Bowl. There's no way in the world I can go this long without watching Auburn play LSU. Yeah, and I, I understand there's those some fans out there who think Auburn should kind of stop with the rivalries of of teams that are better than them every year, kind of thing. That stupid mantra that people have, like the people who wanted the deep South old rivalry to go away. Uh, Auburn has a has a theme. They they are the underdog, and of course you want to flip that script. You never no longer want and key to Hugh Freeze mantra. 
uh, you never want to be the underdog for uh, forever. But every awesome season Auburn fans remember, outside of, I guess, 2013 and 2017, uh, this would, and 2019, I guess, Auburn always beat those teams. Uh, and it was glorious. It was awesome. And, of course, LSU kind of was a was kind of annoying with those seasons. So, I think 2013, Auburn lost to LSU. Uh, if I remember correct, is that right? Am I being stupid? Is that, it was LSU, right? I was not an Auburn fan then. I can tell you, though. <laughs> It was LSU. 2017, I think, was also LSU. 2017 20... um, was the – no, Auburn beat LSU on some really stupid technicality. 2018, Auburn lost to LSU, right? That's right. Yeah, L- yeah, yeah. because that was the uh, – No, was the... no, 17 was when Gus Malzahn blew the lead in Baton Rouge. Yes, it was. And the 2019, of course, was Auburn losing by three points, even though they could have just taken a field goal at halftime instead of throwing the ball to LSU in 2013. Yeah, uh, LSU always uh, always a heel to Auburn, and I think that's kind of stupid that Auburn is now going to go two years without playing them. So I think it's very stupid. Uh, but I think see, I think the schedule is favorable. Uh, class 25 is looking awesome, uh, and you're going. That'd probably be the first year the Walker White era. So More than that'd be a, be a very fun season. Don't put got, too much effort into what could be a 7-1 season this year, but get ready for 2025. If you've got to circle one game that's not Alabama or Georgia, that SEC slate, what are you circling, Dylan, as, a, as an important matchup? I got two, but I'm going to go with my gut. Uh, I think Missouri is going to be good this year. I think that Missouri game in 2025 is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. I think Drinkwitz has it in the right way, and I think, I think Hugh Freeze has Auburn on the right trail. Yeah, I'm going with Oklahoma. First trip to Norman uh, in uh, in SEC play. Uh, that that's going to be, I think, a a pivotal pivotal game for both coaches. Uh, depending on where that falls in the SEC slate, uh, I'd imagine earlier in the season uh, would probably be where I'd predict. Probably the, within the first five games. I can only tell you where the Bama game is going to be scheduled. <laughs> yeah, I can I can only tell you where the Bama game will be scheduled. But I digress. Uh, I think that could be an important one for both coaches depending on where they are after this, uh, the conclusion of this season, Venables obviously being a year ahead of uh, a few freeze and his, in his restructure or re- relocation rather. Uh, so that's, that'll be interesting. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where that's at. I like this schedule and it looks a lot like this year's. So, I mean, there's nothing you can really <laughs> it's say. About. Exact same, except for the non-cons and the four teams that you're playing at this year, you're playing at home and the teams you're playing at home are playing away I don't like this home-and-home home thing going on. Yeah, it is what it is. Even Moving though, on. I need to go see other teams. In Auburn, the Auburn football sphere, this is really like I'll let you ramble if you want. I don't really want to chime in on this. <laughs> uh, Hugh Freeze is blabbering about quarterbacks again, calling Peyton Thorne the most consistent quarterback, which is cool, great, whatever. Um, sure. That, well, this is this is good news for us because last year we ha- we had to spend how many weeks trying to see who would be the starting quarterback between Peyton Thorne, yeah. Holden Garner, Robbie yeah. Ashford, and anybody else who decided they want to throw a football that week. Okay. Uh, this is this is Hugh Freeze basically saying that Peyton Thorne, at least right now, is going to be the starting quarterback twenty twenty five, and I know or twenty twenty four. And I know, I know, I know he's very volatile with the fans. Fans either love him or they hate him or they're I guess it's the third option. It, eh, not a better option right now. It's it's time for Auburn fans to back Peyton Thorne. And that's coming from me. I still have my Robbie Ashford jersey uh, behind me. I still love Robbie Ashford. I was not the biggest Peyton Thorne fan last year, but I've turned the tides. I've looked at it. I was like, this is the quarterback going forward. I'm ready for the Walker White tenure. Don't get me wrong. Everyone's ready to see what Walker White can do whenever he is ready. When he is ready, but he's not yet. He's behind the curve because he's this is his first year. Him and Hank Brown are third and fourth. Vice versa, whichever way. Holden Gurner, second string right now. Peyton Thorne is going to be your first string quarterback. Is going to be your starting quarterback in 2024. I don't think Hugh Freeze is going after a transfer portal guy for, for the spring. We saw what happened last year when that happened. Uh, Peyton Thorne was not ready for the SEC whenever it came through. He had, what, five games last year where he threw for under 100 yards, and yeah, you could use that as bait to, like, this is why you shouldn't want him as your quarterback. Hugh Freeze, known quarterback developer. Peyton Thorne, give him a year. Get behind the quarterback now. We do not need more fans hating on the team year in, year out, just because the quarterback didn't play up to par. 
the last this is uh, he has an opportunity to be really I don't want to say really good but good uh because Hugh Freeze made the proper moves and now Auburn's wide receiver core isn't laughable anymore. Auburn still returns Jay Fair who is a dog, Ravada Fairweather, capital D A W G dog. And of course, cannot forget we Auburn has a wide receiver one for the first time since I want to say Sammy Coates and Darius or Darius Slayton. That's Cam Coleman. Uh, Cam Coleman is going to be a three-year starter at Auburn. And I'm saying that uh, truthfully. He will be a three-year starter at Auburn because he is that good. He is, And I say wide receiver one, Seth Williams. I definitely just forgot I'm about, about Seth to Williams. say. I think uh, – yeah, that is. did you did you see why I was kind of wandering? I was like – Yeah, I was like oh. – I was like he caught, he caught me on something. I was like, oh, Seth Williams. Seth Williams. Seth Williams, him. yeah. Which that was 2020, so it would have been three seasons ago. So, and Auburn ha- has had a collection of decent wide receivers, uh, average, average, uh, whichever one you want to go with that. Uh, some of them have been some of the la- like last place in the SEC in terms of that. Auburn ranked last in passing yards in the SEC last year. So, give you freeze time to develop Peyton Thorne. Believe me, if he gets a quarter quarterback in the portal, then you know it didn't work out. For the spring, at the bare minimum, for the spring, get behind Peyton Thorne. Support the team because this team needs it after the last few years have been so bad. And I say that because last year wasn't terrible. We are just fans who get mad whenever Auburn loses. And I could say that because that's me. Uh, I get very mad when Auburn loses. But the Harson era happened. Live and learn. Get behind Peyton Thorne. Yeah, uh, the Harson era was a, was was an experience. Thanks for Mark mentioning that. I didn't have that on my bingo card for today. Uh, I really don't want to talk about uh, Peyton Thorne. And he's going to be the quarterback this fall. Um, so I mean, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to talk about him going forward. But. Yeah, yeah, it's not that I'm just blowing this off. It's like Hugh Freeze said he's the most consistent. Like I, you could take that one of two ways. You could be really, really excited, and that's how I would take it. It's better for your mental health. Or you could be really, really concerned if that means that everyone's that inconsistent. I would take it the excited way. That way you just don't have like an, an aneurysm. When was the last time Auburn went into a spring slash fall with a starting quarterback? Would have been what, 2020, Bo Nix? 20... 2021. Because you didn't have one when TJ Finley came through because you had to battle that out with uh, – Robbie. Nick's was named the starter early as a freshman, though. Uh, that well, you know, after that camp afterwards, he was definitely the starter going forward. That's what I was getting yeah. at. Like, I guess Auburn's twenty twenty with Bo Nix, but even then, like that was that would have been the last like, well, that wasn't been the last battle, but that was a battle at first with him, and it was after a day where he got named as the starter. I think because yeah. it was him, uh, Gatewood, and Willis, uh, which <laughs> what a room names. One of those NFL guys, two two NFL guys uh, from other teams, and then and Joey Gatewood, who I think is finally out of college. Known Louisville tight end legend. Known UCF quarterback slash tight end legend. And known Kentucky backup quarterback. Joe, legend. Joey Gatewood. Joey Gatewood. Joey Gatewood. Yeah. yeah the, a- the Tate Martell without the hype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, yeah, for sure. I can't believe there were really people that thought that Joey Gate would just start over Bonex. But um, I digress, and we move forward. Uh, like I said, like you mentioned, Dylan, we'll have plenty of time to talk about Peyton Thorne. He's going to clearly be starter QB1 um, going into this fall. And, guys, just be thankful to have some continuity for a change. I think that's kind of nice, actually. And at least I know on our end we're happy to talk about that. Okay, let's talk about things that are going to make you less happy, Auburn fans. <laughs> we're going to pivot over to the diamond. I'm going to start with baseball and then I'm going to talk until I'm blue in the face. And then Dylan's going to do the same about Auburn softball. Godspeed, my brethren. There's certainly no uh, drama going on in the Auburn Twitter verse and around softball. Yeah. With Anywho. some former Auburn Tigers and a current one. Yeah. 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 Um, if you don't follow I, Emily Ellis on Twitter, um, mm-hmm. do so. It's I said, if you don't follow Emily Ellis on Twitter, do so. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's a hundred percent worth the, worth the, uh, time. we will not be personally talking about it on the show. Cause I mean, you won't, I would. Um, but I digress. Fair point. <laughs> um, so if you really like pitchers duels and boring baseball games, boy, <laughs> did you have yourself a treat on Tuesday evening? Auburn defeated South Alabama at Riverwalk Stadium in Montgomery by a staggering score of two to one. And um, when I say Ooh. the most boring baseball game, 
you have ever watched. Your three runs were scored by the one lone run from South Alabama. Very exciting, Homer. There's, that's exciting in baseball. <laughs> and then two runs moved in via the walk. Bases loaded walk. So, yeah, that's really neat. Um, the takeaway here is that Auburn had a bullpen game and pitch lights out. Uh, Christian Her Herbert Holes got the job done pitching three, three flat, giving up no earned runs, only giving up a walk, one walk and four strikeouts. Alex Petrovic, two hits, one run, uh, the one, the one long ball, but pitched four strikeouts and on three and in three innings. And, and like I said, only gave up the one earned run Carson, uh, excuse me, Parker Carlson, two innings pitched, no earned runs. Once again, four strikeouts. I promise this is not me copy pasting my notes. And then Dylan Watts coming in for an inning, posting one strikeout giving up just one hit, closing out the deal. Auburn did a great job on the mound. The problem is so did South Alabama. Uh, they did it by committee too with a combined, I think it was a total of seven different guys on the on the, on the the bump for them. Yes, seven yeah. different guys, including one Logan Wash, who was the only, uh, only uh, actually struck out Auburn twice, was not cheering for that to happen, folks. Just want everybody to know. Um, <laughs> but very proud of, of Logan. Got to gotta bring your, your ERA, ERA down to my, my man. Really happy for you there. Overall, um, the pitching midweek bullpen action, which is great, getting getting ready for what we're about to talk about. Auburn shined. You just need help from your offense and and your typical uh, your your typical production pieces. You're being, being your Cooper Weisses, your Ike Irishes, your Bo your Bo Bobby Barrels. Yeah, just not really doing that. Um, between your 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 leadoff four, you had three hits on a total of five hits on the day. You drew seven walks and left 10 on base. Um, that is not how you win ball games. <laughs> and uh, <they're laughs> lucky, lucky to get, yeah, lucky to get out of there alive. <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave it at that. Dylan, you're going to slump. Uh, that's going to happen. You're going to have nights where your team slumps. But the big news for Auburn here is that their pitcher stepped up in a big way. And if they can carry that into this weekend, specifically getting the guys work that you got work in the midweek, they can come out of the, the bullpen and be valuable. You've got a fighting chance. But my concern here is that as you host the number one team in the country in the University of Arkansas, unless you get some help on the other side of the dish, that's not going to cut it. You look at Arkansas from the surface level. We're pivoting over into their home, uh, excuse me, Auburn's home series with the Razorbacks, the number one Razorbacks this Friday through Sunday, weather pending. I think we're going to get a little bit of rain come through the southeast. So I'm sure that those games will get flipped around because why not? Because rain loves Auburn, Alabama right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, so we start getting a dome. Then you get a dome on all, on all their stadiums. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arkansas as a collaborative team is hitting 287, but their first, your your leadoff six, in large, are all hitting north of 318, north of 310, uh, and then you're really getting dragged down by your your other guys that are getting significant abs uh, and your Hudson, uh, Hudson White, Ty Williams, uh, Wilson Meyer, and Jason Jones, guys that are just kind of not seeing the ball great right now, but this group. I mean, they, they've already put I, – I had the number right in front of me. Excuse me. They've already put 25 balls over the wall. Uh, they're, they're, they're slugging at a high rate. They're slugging at 470 as a team. Their on-base percentage is 406, and they're not making any errors. I'm just going to go ahead and be honest with you guys, and, and this is my blanket statement on Auburn baseball uh, as, this, as we stand going into this week. you got to play perfect for at least – two out of these three games if you're going to win one um if you can steal one away from arkansas this weekend you can everyone's gonna be upset that auburn's it'll be a combined one and five starting off the sec slate whatever you had two back-to-back -back elite omaha level uh teams come 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 through uh or not come through but that you've had to had to do battle with to start off your season and i know it doesn't get easier in the sec i do not think there's a world where auburn sweeps this weekend if they do i will be jumping for joy on the sunday live stream <laughs> but all things considered, Dylan, it's just it's, it's this simple. Your offense has to work counts, and your routine – I was going to say routine offenders. It kind of still work, still, still kind of holds up. But your routine production points have got to be routinely producing for you. You can't get help from other parts in your lineup to take down the number one team in the country. Your, your best players need to step up and be better than their best players. That's how you beat great teams. Then you need to get supporting help from the rest of your supporting cast. Uh, that's just that's just the remedy. Auburn pitching needs to be consistent. It needs to be limited innings for your starters. Let your let your bullpen do what it's going to do. If it's going to kill you, it's going to kill you in the in the, the same in the fifth inning as it might in the seventh. It really doesn't matter. 
So make sure that you're limiting innings on the, on the bump, whether that be from Jogo or beyond. And now's not the time for experimental pitching. It's not. It's not the time to go let a guy figure something out. I won't name names. We all know who I'm talking about. But that's where that's that's my overview here, Dylan. I like Auburn to win one of three. Yeah, I, I like that too. Uh, I, I think it's going to come down to can Auburn get consistent on the plate. Uh, if you look at Arkansas's uh, pitching staff, who you're mostly going to see this weekend, um, the highest ERA is 2.74 uh, at the highest. That's just your, your main pitchers that have been playing and other than that, I mean, of course, you go down the bullpen and it goes it goes up from there uh, for some of the guys, not all of them. Uh, you, you're looking at that. Uh, Coop McMurray, Ike Irish, and Bobby Barrels combined for three hits uh, on on Tuesday against South Alabama. You, you got to hit the ball. Uh, you got to get on base. Because what we've seen from the past couple weeks is uh, we, we've not had a consistent three-day weekend from all three pitchers yet. Uh, you've either had Joe go got raked or, or you had uh, Carson Myers or you had Chase Alsip. Uh, and of course, last week you had all three of them kind of, kind of feel the wrath of Vanderbilt. You got to get some runs to make up for what could be a very uh, terrible weekend to be an Auburn pitcher uh, based on how Arkansas hits the ball. But, Never say never. I mean, last time a number one team came into came into Plainsman Park, Auburn took two or swept LSU last year. I think they took two. Took two, I think. I'd have to look. That's a great. That, dust, that's a great Dustin question. Yeah, uh, and that's also around the same time that Alabama's head, head coach got fired uh, <laughs> for his reasoning. <laughs> That'll never not be funny to me. Very funny. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll take Auburn getting uh, probably the Sunday game. Yeah, I was going to say hey, it's Sunday. Rubber <laughs> so, Sunday seems like a nice time to get, get, yeah. a, get a home win. That feels, <laughs> that feels entirely on the table. Um, it's a tough matchup. I mean, it, it's a brutal slate and it doesn't get a hell of a lot easier. You got AM next week and Tennessee the following, but it's doable to grab one here and then really right the ship i'm not talking down guys like auburn's just got it it's it's a tough league it's a really tough league and yes they need to get right sooner than later but it's not this weekend and if it is great not that's fantastic it's just not realistic to assume it's this weekend right dylan yeah another team needs to get right dylan um i'm just gonna go and say i don't think they're gonna do it so I'll let you uh, I'll let you cook and have fun with this one because I somehow got to talk about how I think Auburn's going to lose two out of three against the number one team in the country and somehow I still do not want to be in your shoes for this conversation. Yeah, before I do that, I want to th- I'm gonna throw us a nice uh, some uh, some heartwarming stories for some Auburn NFL players just to have some have some happy thoughts going into in this conversation. Yeah, uh, Montrevious Adams signed a two year deal with Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Jack Driscoll signed with the Miami Dolphins, and Noah Igbenogonine signed with the Washington Commanders. Uh, so Igbo, big big Igbo over there, and of course, happy belated birthday to one Derek Hall, still waiting to be invited to, for his uh, awesome awesome uh, barbecue that he makes. Yeah, uh, still waiting for that invite. Uh, but yeah, uh, with that, happy times are over. <laughs> it's time to talk about Auburn softball. Oh my God! The game that happened yesterday. Oh my! Uh, ten innings. Ten innings, uh, which was won by a wild pitch uh, that Isis Trasvik uh, was able to score uh, score on in the tenth inning, uh, top of the tenth, and then uh, Maddie Pen- or Shelby Lowe locked it down. Uh, you, you got Maddie Pinto in this game, which I was kind of surprised that you that you had that. But I guess Troy also. Uh, a lot of people uh, unhappy about that, by the way. Yeah, uh, but she did break the record for uh, for all time starts for an Auburn pitcher, which she would have broke on Friday. Just saying, uh, I don't understand throwing out your your big arm uh, in the midweek. Never do that, please God. Actually, threw for eight innings, uh, through 136 pitches. No comment. No comment on that. Uh, but yeah, this was a this was a game that happened. Uh, Anna Waller started off right, got a home run, uh, and then it was one zero until the fourth, uh, where Annabelle Weidra singled and helped uh, McNamara uh, score. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, Michael Caleb Packer triple on a scoring on a throwing error. So yeah, some th- same things happened on Tuesday. Things happened. Yeah, and they'll happen again this weekend. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so Auburn takes on a top twenty-five team in Texas A&M, who is currently, as it stands, twenty-five and three, fourteen and one at ho- fourteen and one at home, and they're going to College Station that weekend. Uh, looking at Texas A&M on the plate, uh, their uh, big time batter is batting a four eighteen, which uh, I've heard is good uh, because it's point one away from being every other time she comes at the plate, she hits the ball and gets on base. Uh, after that, it's a very large drop off, you know, a, a 392. Uh, <laughs> then you have a 352, a 347, a 342, a 313, and then 286 and 255. And then after that, you have a couple of other girls who are uh, so one of them 442 uh, coming coming up. Uh, but looking at you talking about Arkansas has, has brought in 25 home runs. Uh, Texas A&M has, has 39. 30. Oh, so you played more games. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. Uh, it really, really does. Uh, this is this is a series that I'm not looking forward to having to having to watch. I think uh, that you're going to say that a lot this year. Yeah, be. Auburn currently has 21 home runs on the year. Um, very much missing out on those on, on those power hitters that you had last year. Uh, you know, of course, Bree Ellis, uh, Lindsey Garcia. Never <laughs> Not Denver, Denver, Jones. Jones. Uh, Denver, Denver Bryant, Bryant, Denver Bryant. Yeah, <laughs> getting our Denver's confused. Yeah, uh, dude, geographics, man, they're really, <laughs> really messing with me here. <laughs> but I'm, I, I would love to be the, I would love to go grab those book glasses over there and say that I am looking forward to, to what's going on on Friday because it's, it's a big, it's a big time matchup. Uh, because you're batting the top twenty five team, Auburn currently doesn't have the correct lineup planned out at any given time. I mean, we're looking at Arkansas, uh, the Arkansas weekend. Rose Roach was leading off, and I, I love Rose. She She's great, uh, a great second baseman. She's not the best hitter in the world. I definitely should not be batting leadoff. Auburn should never be bunting in the first inning uh, with someone on first. That should never be happening. Uh, I mean, and, you should never be at the point where you feel like you have to play small ball the entire game. Yeah. Uh, and that happens whenever uh, some of the power hitters from last year that made this team so good. And of course this team is talented. It, they have the talent to, to do something in the sec. This, this c- series worries me more than anything, because this could be the telltale sign that the, the season's not going to go well. And of course I've already said my thoughts on, on the leadership, uh, of this team and it's and for one thing I, I think it's hard not to kind of hearing all the other stuff cheering for the girls that are having success successful seasons elsewhere denver a denver i said denver jones again denver bryant having a very good season for south carolina Lindsay garcia uh hit a softball to the moon last weekend uh for clemson brie ellis doing brie ellis things at arkansas you have all these girls who are succeeding, and you can't help but think like, "What why if they're not here? Yeah, you know, what if? What if they didn't leave? Uh, Auburn made the correct pickups. Uh, they replaced the girls that need to be replaced, but you feel you, there's a void still in this Auburn softball team, and you're going to get a big void next to the loss column or next to the win column uh, this weekend because I don't think Auburn gets a game into in, in, in Aggie Land. I just don't think it happens. Uh, I, I love Maddie Penta. She's the greatest pitcher in Auburn softball history, and I cannot help but think that she's been wasted uh, for how good she is. For how not good, not good. I'm not even gonna say the word good for how great she has been for Auburn softball. But you just don't have anybody uh, who can really hit the ball. Uh, you have you have a, a lot of great base runners. You have Michaela Packer. You have Ice Tresfic. Uh, you have Abby Smith. You have all of these girls who can run the bases, but you don't have anybody who can bring them in. That's an issue. Um, I don't think Auburn wins this by at all. Uh, Cause if you're looking for, if you're looking for a weekend for Auburn to figure out their batting situation, it's not going to be the weekend where the highest ERA in Texas A&M's bullpen is a 2.23. Their starting pitcher ZRA is a 1.1. Yep. 
so Auburn softball, I don't know that they're getting a win this weekend. Uh, and I this might be a theme of the year, but good googly moogly. It's hard uh, to sometimes pump right now. It really is. My, my glasses over there are collecting dust from – I need to start wearing more for basketball. They need they, – basketball well, deserves those. I still have a lot of faith in Auburn baseball uh, when we're well, on the on the diamond sports side. I, I do. I do. They're playing national championship contenders. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, not, I'm actually genuinely not worried yet. I'll tell you when I am. I'll tell you guys when I am uh, worried about Auburn baseball, Auburn softball. Uh, to everything you just mentioned, Dylan, and to your to your point, to your credit, I don't even know how much it is X's and O's anymore. Um, I think there's a a clear disconnect, and I I don't know what said disconnect is, but there's a disconnect between the, the team and the coaching staff. Uh, there is visible and tangible energy or lack thereof rather that there's not a ton of confidence on this group. Um, there's no doubt that they love on one another, that this, this is a tight knit group because that's how teams work. Uh, but there's, and, and as soon as things start going South, people are going to headhunt the coach. That's how that works. Uh, that, that is the nature of coaching. So if you don't like it, get it out, get out. And it's just that you're in the wrong profession. If that bothers you, but there is clearly an issue, and we talked about this last show, uh, between the, the 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 roster of, of actual athletes and their coaching staff. There's exceptions to every rule. I'm sure there's great relationships wherever you want to point, pinpoint in different spots. But as a whole, this culture appears from the outside not great, and the, the results are not staggeringly good. That is is not a situation you want to be in if you've been on the hot seat for the past couple of years anyways. Yeah, and I, I think the best way to put this is uh, if you don't follow Wardam softball on Twitter and you yes. love the softball team, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, he hit the nail right on the head. Like, you know, those, that game where you try to hit the nail in with, when you're like mm-hmm. just trying yeah, to go I know, up I know exactly what tweet you're yeah. about. To you're right. Yeah. Uh, Wardam softball. It's not me, but I can't say I don't feel the same way. Uh, he said, and I and, quote, I do not want anyone to misunderstand my frustration. I'm happy they won. I'm happy that the team kept fighting. I just am pretty sure there is a major disconnect between the staff and the players. My frustration is with this coaching staff and no player whatsoever. End quote. That that's that's exactly what it is. Uh, I'm sure 99.9 percent of that. Yeah. Um, I'll leave I'll, I'll leave the point one up to you guys' imagination. Yeah, that's that's all other conversation for you to for you to talk about uh because i don't it's not that i, I don't like it, it i i would need to you endorse it and that's okay yeah i don't endorse it yeah. uh but yeah that that's that's basically how i i feel like at this point and you see it, it it's not something that only we're feeling too it's not only something we're softball is feeling every time auburn loses and of course, this happens every time a team loses and you get the graphics and you get the mad fans who think that everything is going bad and everything is going sideways and, the, and everything's on fire. It's hard not to kind of side with those fans. Oh, it, it is on fire now. Like this yeah, is, yeah. Because Auburn, a, a team who uh, has done damage uh, in the past couple of years in the SEC has currently fallen to two and four in the sec and that is because you know sunday games are fun uh because you finally figure everything out uh whenever you finally uh play play those sunday games and and you don't give up five runs a game or you don't give up six runs in the game if if auburn doesn't get at least two or and i say that because auburn is still ranked in some polls season doesn't get easier from here it's texas a&m it's tennessee and of course, you got Sanford and Louisiana Tech, Georgia Tech, UAB, and then of course you got LSU. You got Kentucky, Ole Miss, right. Alabama. Those all round at your schedule. That's not an easy slate of games. Auburn had an easy slate of games early on, and of course you had the cancellations. But we can't forget some of the the Virginia Techs of the world. That that where Auburn should have been zero and two against Virginia Tech, but they got lucky with that tie. And you missed out on Belmont. You missed out on uh, the second game against Belmont. You, you missed out on Illinois. You missed out on on Longwood. You missed out on Clemson, who I, Clemson might have done some damage against you right there. You, you struggled with UNI, UNI. You lost one to UNI. 
you, it's it's just you, you missed out on so, several games that cost the development of your of your team. But you're now to about to go into your third years in the SEC. At this point, it should be showing signs of being figured out. It doesn't feel like it is. It's like this team is settled down on we're going to throw Matty Penta into the ringer. Yep. And we're gonna see, and we're gonna her ERA. I think is one of the is probably the highest it's been in, in her career because I, I think right now she has a. And then remove that. All right, it's actually pretty. It's still pretty low. Thank God, one point three two. So thank yeah. God, I, it, it felt a lot higher because I felt like she was just getting raked against 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 Arkansas. Arkansas was playing. Had, their bats were on fire. They were angry. Yep. That that yep. was a, that was a Brie Ellis uh, locker room talk right there. That was that was it. We're gonna come out swinging because. <laughs> Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Brie Ellis now is two SEC Player of the Week awards. Uh, not two this year. She already had one, uh, but two this year. And yeah. back to back. Well, I will leave everybody with this parting thought before we quickly touch on gymnastics and then roll out of this show since we are hitting the uh, the, bo- the top of the second hour of the show, which we usually don't exceed much more than one hour. But we're having fun. We're hanging out here on the College Loop Podcast and lots going on in Auburn, the Auburn sphere. I will throw this out there. I probably sound like a little bit of a hypocrite right now for saying, you know, the sky is falling on Auburn softball, but cut Auburn baseball break. And I, I, for, for people on, on the surface, I get it. Um, Butch Thompson, the proof is in the pudding. You've been to Omaha twice. He built the program out of the dust. Uh, that, that is, that is where that lead way comes from for me. I, I, I'm on, I'm in the give Butch, uh, lifetime contract camp. That's the camp that I will live in. Nobody has plateaued harder than Auburn softball in the past two years. Nobody has has proven that there's a ceiling more than Auburn softball at a place that used to be a softball palace. Um, It's inexcusable. It's not the standard. It's It's not like football where you sit here and go, well, you know, the school across the state's been a dynasty. We play in the toughest conference in the in the country, and we've not been able to have you know long term half decades worth of success. Don't I'm not taking away from what football programs done. Don't get defensive here, but, <laughs> oh, but I'm you, not, I'm not. you know what you know I'm getting at here. It's not one of those situations, and it's not like a Butch Thompson or a Bruce Pearl where they build it out of the uh, with their own two hands and have shown that the sky's the limit. We know the sky's the limit at Auburn. We know we uh, Auburn has been there. It's not a, oh, this is as far as this program's capable of going. It's as far as its leadership is capable of going. That's where it's at. I'm leaving it there. That is why Auburn baseball is catching some slack from us right now because I do firmly believe that this team's going to get hot at the right time. Uh, and when I say get hot at the right time, I do think that they're going to grab one this week and, and then be able to build on that and roll. And, and, and once you get your, your toughest opponents out of the way you, and you play them again when you come down the stretch in the SEC tournament, that's a different ball game. They're different teams. Cannot say the same for Auburn softball. Let's talk Auburn gymnastics and roll out of here, Dylan. Of course, the SEC championships are this weekend. Auburn currently at is going to be in session one of the SEC championships. They're going to be competing at 2.30 p.m. They're going against Arkansas, Missouri, and the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, Auburn currently, out of these out of the three components, they, or opponents, they have only beaten Missouri. Uh, but Georgia uh, only beat them by .6, so that's – Pretty substantial. Uh, Arkansas beat them by point four, or point also point six. Never mind, math is hard. Uh, and Missouri beat them by point four. Uh, but neutral site games because uh, they play Georgia in Athens. They play Missouri at home. That's that win. And they play Arkansas away. So neutral site games or neutral site meets are going to help. Uh, and it's just key for Auburn here to start playing your or start competing at your best level. You have. Uh, you can't let Vault tear you down uh, because SC is very, very good. And Auburn currently going in, I believe, as the seventh uh, team in in, in, this, uh, in the championships uh, out of eight. Uh, you're looking at it that way because uh, you're not competing against LSU, Alabama, Kentucky, and um, I'm, I'm forgetting one. Is it uh, Florida? Florida. You're not competing against those four. Uh, I mean, the, the scores still account, but it doesn't. It wouldn't hurt to win this session sure. uh and i think it's very feasible i mean of course 0. 0.6 is a lot in gymnastics terms but you're not competing at 
in Fayetteville. You're not competing in in Athens. You're competing in. I set myself up for failure there. New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, set myself up uh, for that right there. Um, it, it's it's time to start competing at your highest level. I uh, can't let vault tear you down. Can't let bars tear you down. That was that's that was a weird that's a weird thing that ha- has happened uh, this this season. Um, it, it, it's time to start finding your your spark, your fireworks. Uh, you got Cassie Stevens. You got Sophia Growth. Um, get behind them. Uh, start playing and start competing at their level. You you got you got the star power to do that. Uh, Julianne Huff has been an absolute uh, has has been on fire. Get the girls who are on the right trail, and it's time for Auburn to start competing in the SEC championships again. Best of luck to Auburn Gymnastics, Jeff Graybo and company, and uh, all the young list, uh, that list of young ladies who have worked their tail ends off to be where they're at right now and to compete at the level that they are on. But bet wishing them the best. Um, very confident in their ability to uh, turn some heads as, as they approach a uh, national uh, tournament level. Excuse me. Uh, it's still tournament. It's still weird because there are meets and it's, 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 you know, there's been two tournaments uh, in a row, but one of them doesn't really count because it was the kidney care women's gymnastics championships. Yeah. It's, it's great sport. Very confusing postseason formatting, just to be completely (laughs) transparent. Like, I'm so confused. I was like, I was reading, I was like, okay, the gymnastics championships are last weekend, but the SC championships are this weekend, but then the regional championships are the next weekend. Yeah. It's, it's it's like taking a bad drug and not coming back from the trip and not understanding anything ever. That's kind of how I feel whenever I look at the scheduling. Anyways, wishing them the best. Wishing all of Auburn student athletes the best as they go into their respective events this week, especially those in postseason contention. Wishing them uh, good luck and uh, good health, making sure everybody stays healthy, takes care of themselves, takes care of themselves and their uh, their mind and their body. Let's roll out here, Dylan. Before we do so, I want to remind everybody, if you're hanging out with, with us here on YouTube, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell right here on the College Loop YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up on the video, like the video, give us your comments, your feedback on anything, Auburn Athletics, any topics you think we missed, anything you want us to talk about on the Sunday live stream, make sure you tune into the Sunday live stream. Looking forward to seeing all of you guys there. We'll all hang out. We'll chat. We'll powwow. Hopefully, it is after an Auburn uh, second round of advancement into the Sweet 16. And two Auburn sweeps on on the diamond. (laughs) And uh, we can say that and pretend like that's true, but give us your feedback in the (laughs) the comment section here on the YouTube channel. We certainly appreciate it. Once again, hit the subscribe button. If you're listening on a streaming platform, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Give us five stars, thumbs up, whatever the highest rating is on your streaming platform of choice. Share the show with a friend so we can get the word out there. Spread the good word. It is March Madness. Everybody needs a, a home to talk about Auburn basketball and where better to do so then right here on the College Loop Podcast or the War Report Podcast family. Moving forward from that, if you want to support the shows and, and the ways that go beyond just hitting like, subscribe, ring the bell, or sharing the show, which we certainly appreciate. And that's that's all we ask of you is just to just to help us get the spread the good word. But if you want to help the show out just a little bit more, you can head over to thewarreport.com, pick up your very own College Loop War Report co-branded Feel and Loopy t-shirt. Comes in five different colorways. Most comfortable shirt ever. You look awesome wearing uh, wearing it during watch uh, watch it while you're watching March Madness on like 15 screens. If you're like me, I'll have like a zillion screens. My apartment will look like a Buffalo Wild Wings. And I will be wearing my feeling loopy t-shirt just so I can get in the right headspace, get the get the bar mentality going on as I watch Auburn take on Yale this evening. That link is available in the description to any of our shows. If you are listening to this before you go to work, before you go to school, before you, I don't know, get out of bed in the morning, you still have a couple of hours to register for the College Loop podcast men's and women's bracket challenge that link is also in the description it's the last show that'll be in the description because if you're in it after this we assume you know how to navigate to the <laughs> bracket challenge so make sure you go ahead and sign yourself up for your chance to win two free tickets to a day if you're if you win the women's bracket two free tickets to a day and a round of golf for you and a friend with myself mr one harrison tar hi you can come play golf with me at robert trent jones in auburn very very excited to see how you guys shape up there I'm Harrison Tar at by Harrison Tar on the Bird app and on Instagram at Tar underscore 15 on TikTok. If you guys are into the golf contents, go check it out. I really, really appreciate you guys. Let me know uh, in the comments what y'all's handicaps are so I can see if uh, if you win, if I'm actually going to buy you a round of golf. Because if you're lower than me, then I might reconsider. Jokes, I'll, I'll do it inside. I'm good at my word, but I'll be playing off the red tees if you're like a scratch golfer. I digress. Thank you guys so much for your love and support. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Enjoy. Auburn Yale. Enjoy Auburn, Arizona. Dylan, let's get out of here. Of course, I'm Dylan Lark. Hey, boy, take on Twitter, of course. All the ones that also got me on Instagram as well at Dylan Lark, L-A-R-C-K. And, of course, if you're looking for War Report gaming content, you can also find me over there 
as well because i am i've been trying to cook something for a hot minute now uh trying to get revamped onto my pc to start getting some more gaming content like that uh but that is also a, a lot of fun uh and of course you got me on tank top football on youtube and tiktok as well because i'm gonna try to get some content up there because i love football so daggum much but i can only talk about auburn uh i, I love i'll talk about auburn all day but my I love for love golf, about dylan's love for football <laughs> Because I would love to start talking about like one of my one of the things I had to, I was like talking about was like the downfall of Vanderbilt football because you know they peaked in like 2016 with under under Franklin he left and then all crap broke loose so I want to start doing videos like that uh, and of course catch me on there uh, and of course looking for me anywhere else even right hand the college loop where you should like comment and subscribe you where you should like give your predictions for Auburn basketball, both men's and women's, uh, men against Yale, women against Arizona. How far do you think Auburn can make it in the tournament and why is it the championship? And of course, what are your thoughts on men's or on baseball and softball? And of course, we love a good rant. We love ranting. Uh, if you have a rant you want to get out, we will give you the vo voice to do so on the live streams because that is the best place to release all frustrations on Auburn sports. Uh, and, of course, if you're in our face, it's completely understandable. You have us on the audio versions of the show as well on Spotify, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and, of course, Amazon Music. And, of course, all of that being said, War Eagle, and this has been the College Loop Podcast. Thanks for Love watching. You guys.